All right, hello everyone. Uh, so we are going to talk about all of the Battle Pass Eagles that just became available. Right, let's talk about Dawn's Electric Screaming Eagle first. It's going to be an Envy Eagle and it's going to focus on Envy Resonance and uh, Charge Count. So most likely it's going to be paired up with something like W Dawn. In my opinion, I think it's not something you would want to use though on W Dawn because what happens with this Eagle, right? is that you need to use quite a bit of resources in the TEF slot for a 5 AoE piercing Ego with potentially more damage here. And if you have 20 charge count, you can spend 20 charge count to deal additional damage, up to 70% additional damage. So the thing about this, right, is that if you spend all of your charge count, you are not getting your coin power on your skill 2, skill 1 or skill 3, pretty much. You lose a lot of coin power stuff. So this Ego here is in my opinion, can be seen as something like a big AoE nuke where you are going to destroy a bunch of enemies weak to piercing or weak to envy, right? So I think that's the only case that is actually pretty decent. If you want to go for single target damage, it's still better to use Telepo just to charge up yourself. This Ego is meant to spend in order to nuke a bunch of enemies and you need to get envy resistance as well, otherwise it's going to be a 2 AoE, which is not very good. If you can get 5 envy resonance, you can get a attack weight of plus 3 and that will give you a 5 AoE. For maximum damage, you will also need to get 6 Envy Resonance minus 3 which will give you 30% more damage which is the max. Before attack, if this unit has 20 plus charge count, you will also spend 20 to deal another 40% so that is something to do if you somehow have 20 plus charge count. I do not know how you're going to get 20 plus. It's pretty hard. Yeah. So this Ego here looks to be more of a just destroy a bunch of enemies Try to get Envy Resonance so you can do a lot of extra damage. If you happen to have 20 charge count, then feel free to just nuke even more damage and kill a bunch of small adds. In addition to that, you have an on-kill effect, gain plus 2 charge count. So you really want to be killing with this Ego. Passive-wise, you also need to get a kill. Because if the target is defeated by Slash or Envy, then you will gain 1 attack power up next turn. So yeah, everything points to being a kill ego, which means that it's only really good for ad fighting or maybe fighting bosses with small uh, ads that you can kill. Corrosion effect here, pretty much what it has is slightly more damage, maximum of 36%, but you need to hit the correct envy resonance as per usual, negative coin as expected. And before you attack, if you are less than 20 charge count, you spend 1% of the max HP, uh, per missing charge count to raise charge count to 20 and then immediately spend it to deal 5% more damage for every spent charge count. And then you get an, an empowered effect of gain plus 3 charge count on kill. I see this ego as something like a bonus and maybe only when you're just trying to kill a bunch of enemies that are specifically weak to this element. Otherwise, I would rather just use Telepool only and then save the envy resources for other things like maybe body sack or whatever other egos that you're going to bring along that requires envy or pride. Yep. So that's my initial thoughts about that ego. If I miss something, feel free to let me know. Let's talk about Masalt. Masalt can help the other electric ship Dawn ego to hit its required amounts because first things first, let's talk about the big uh, number here. Before attack, gain plus 12 charge count to yourself first of all. And then after you attack, you also apply plus 8 charge count to one other ally with the least charge count. And this number of affected allies grows by your Envy Resonance minus 2, maximum of 5. Uh, the maximum of 5 is a bit funky because it means that you need to get 7 Resonance minus 2 to get 5. So that's the only way to get it, which means that in the future we might have 7 members in a team comp or something like that. Because if not, right now we are capped at 6, so 6 minus 2 is going to be 4 pretty much. You only are able to get up to 5 other allies with that uh, NV resonance. So I guess the minus 2 part here and maximum of 5 is just to accommodate for future 7 team comp in the future. Yep. But this is very solid. If you're running a full charge count team, a full NV team, you will definitely enjoy having everyone instantly charged to a certain amount because you activated one Masalt Ego. By the way, this costs 5 resources, 4 NV and 1 Ref. So in my opinion, this is a way better use of your NV resources just to get everyone to a certain charge count so you can start spending your skill trees or your skill twos with empowered uh, coin powers, you know? This Ego is just really, really solid. You don't really care about the AoE being 2 because this Ego is mostly being used for the charge count. Besides that, you also have highest envy resonance. You will apply one damage up to self and all allies, 
and on the, at six highest resonance, you apply an additional one envy damage up to all self and all allies. Yep. Do take note that this is this turn, so you need your assault to be very fast. And the on hit effect here is going to be rupture, which doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. This ego is just really really solid at giving your allies a lot of buff. You need to slap him into an envy team, and you need to be a very charge focused assault. The one big problem I had with this ego when I first saw it is that it's a Tef. And Tef fights with Regret Massault. Regret Massault is extremely strong, giving you coin power straight up in exchange for minus one base power, which is always a W. You always do that. So Electric Screaming Ship is specifically a support ego, as uh, a lot of uh, Massault's egos are. It's going to be a support ego that you want to run purely in envy damage and charge count. And if you do not run it in that, you might as well slap in re uh, slap in regret assault. And in some cases, you can even argue regret assault is just better because you get more coin power onto your rhino, get more coin power onto your W assault. It's just you know coin power is coin power. You just take coin power whenever you see it. So it's going to be very tricky to argue this over the other coin power ego. But this support power here, allowing you to give a lot of your allies charge count makes for an interesting addition to the charge count team. Corrosion effect, um, it doesn't have anything special. Basically, this character will spend its charge count to deal more damage like Dawn. And at 10 plus charge count, you also apply this effect twice. So you inflict 2 paralyzed this turn and 6 rupture this turn. It's like whatever, I don't really give a shit. Passive, at 4 plus resonance, you gain 2 offense level up and 2 uh, defense level up. If the resonance was an envy resonance, you will apply this to two other allies on the dashboard as well. Yep, so this ego is not bad. I mean, it's two offense level, two defense level. If you can somehow squeeze one offense level up from somewhere else, you can get one additional clash power. It's fine. It's like whatever, really, for this ego passive. The real shit is really this charge count and charge count uh, support passive here. Yeah, the apply plus eight charge count to one other ally. Really, really strong. Really, really strong, in my opinion. Right, so that's going to be it for the Screaming Sheep. Pretty much uh, going to be charge related and envy related. So you only really want to use them in those team comps. Let's talk about the Otis Wow Ego though. Yes, we have two Wow Egos this season. One of them belongs to Otis. And what is this Ego about? Tremor. Yep, it's uh, going to be a Tremor focused Ego. Very, very good for your Mola Otis. So, first off, this ego is going to cost a whopping 10 sanity. Yep, you read that right. It's 10 sanity for a wow ego. Crazy, right? But the thing about this 10 SP is that for the next 3 turns, you will lose 8 SP at every turn end. And this is important because you are basically paying 8 times 3, which is going to be 24, plus 10, 34 SP in total, right? But you are paying 10 now, and you're paying 8 at every turn end. So what this means, right, is that instead of me paying 35 SP right now, which will absolutely destroy my sanity and drop me to like maybe 10, maybe even zero, maybe even minus 10, where it's very, very hard for me to come back from that. Is I have to go and reclash everything or use another ego that restores SP. The fact that I lose eight SP every turn and I only spend 10, right, means that I am able to clash at slightly better coin levels because I only have, let's say I use this ego at 45. So I spend 10, 35, and then I lose 8 at the end of the turn. So I'm going to drop to 20, 20, 27, 37, yeah. I drop to 27 SP. Compared to fighting at 10 SP, I would be definitely okay clashing at 27 SP. Like that is not bad, honestly. So the fact that you are paying your SP in the future is quite a big deal in my opinion like imagine if we go to an left ego right can you imagine spending 45 sp straight up and then just unleashing like terror from the left ego and then you now have to go and catch the boss next turn and it's like holy shit this boss is crazy strong coin power i have zero sp i'm not gonna win anymore right the fact is if they slap this onto the left ego it will make a lot of sense because then if I have to clash at only like 20 SP or something like that, it will be much more doable than clashing with like 0 SP. So this, in my opinion, is a nice change and opens up a lot of options for future high SP egos as well. Yeah, Losing 8 SP every turn is just not a... It's, it's a really good way of, um, sub, uh, of preventing like really shitty uh, clashes immediately after you use an ego. Yeah, I think this is not a bad method. Besides that, this ego has a 30 in total coin power, attack weight of 5, but you can get pride or sloth resonance, minus 2, 
to get an additional attack weight of 2 to get a 7 AoE blunt of 30. 30 damage. That is really solid. Besides that, you have like a ton of other free stuff. You get Stagger Threshold raised by Tremor Burst increased by 100%. You inflict 6 Tremor, you Amplitude Conversion, and you Tremor Burst. The Amplitude Conversion is going to be Tremor Fracture. So what this will do is it will convert all the Tremor on the target into Tremor Fracture when staggered and when the sum of the potency and count adds up to 20 or higher, you increase the stagger level by 1. And what I think that means, right, is that if you got stagger on the target, it becomes stagger plus. If you got stagger plus on the target, it becomes stagger plus plus. And I have not done the math and I have not checked whether that is actually going to be worth it over the 24 defense level down you get using the uh, Otis uh, Ufi uh, Heathcliff yet. But I will get back to you on that. But this seems pretty solid because you are able to get additional dynamic multiplier. But I don't know by how much. I can't remember by how much. But I think this might be a lot better than using the defense level down. Because you can get defense level down pretty easily. But fracture is going to be a uh, dynamic. I could be wrong. I think I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm wrong. But yeah, I'll go and double check this math and get back to you guys on that. Besides that, you know, you're paying 10 costs for all of this stuff here for like so much stuff like this is 10 costs 10 costs for a wow ego and it gives you all of this like this is a w ego definitely definitely w let's talk about the corrosion because the corrosion also has other interesting things about it first off negative coin expected you have the exact same thing but the stagger threshold raised by tremor burst was only increased by 50 percent instead of 100 percent in exchange for that you get three tremor count application you get three instances of tremor burst if you can hit one tail you get three if you only hit the hits then you get the two but three tremor bursts in a row hmm, that is pretty spicy actually three tremor bursts with 50 percent stagger threshold increase if you're able to hit all it's pretty much 150 percent compared to this one only triggering one time 100 percent so it might be a massive w if you're able to corrode and want to go and stagger a guy to the next stagger threshold this could be quite huge right Besides that, passive also is Grand Welcome, which is the ego gift from Mirror Dungeon. If the target is staggered or defeated, great line. I love staggered or defeated. It's very flexible, can be used for Amno or for enemies. You gain one Pride Ego resource and one Ego resource for one other random affinity three times per turn. This is just great. Basically, if you just use your ego and you get a passive on that same turn, Boom, 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 boom. All targets are staggered. Then you get three Pride Ego resource and three Ego resource for something else, giving you six back. So that is already nice fat refund. So yeah, this Ego here, whether it be used now or used later, it's like, it's, it's going to be just a solid Ego. You got a refund passive here or just a win more passive essentially once you use this one time as well as a bunch of other stuff here maybe you're setting up for a tremor fracture turn because you're hitting the stagger threshold then you get additional stagger and then you just go and pound the guy with a lot of extra damage i think that this is very very cool definitely a good addition for otis i need to do some testing first for the tremor fracture before i can determine whether this is actually more damage than the other tremor uh, status yeah Right, so that is really it about this binds. Let's talk about the next one, which is going to be binds for Heathcliff. And if you've seen the story part 3 already, you would know that there is a certain ID that might be the main pairing for this ego. So I will talk with that ID in mind. If you don't know what the hell that is, go play the story and then come back to this video, alright? So, this ego is going to have an 18 plus 15. It's going to be a 33. 33 in a 7 AoE. There is no condition to get 7 AoE. It's just straight up 7 AoE. So that is already very nice. Next, it costs 10. Same as the other Vine's Ego. For 3 turns, lose 10 SP at turn end. So this is going to cost quite a lot more than the other Vine's Ego. But other Vine's Ego is about 34, if I remember correctly. And then this is going to be a 40 in total cost. Right? The fact that you're only paying 10 SP every turn is pretty okay. And if you happen to go for like your Sun Shower Heathcliff, losing 10 SP every turn is actually pretty damn good. So you would definitely use this Ego to nuke your own sanity as your Sun Shower Heathcliff. So there is potential here, alright? Potential man has potential to use this Ego just to nuke his own SP. Yeah, so that is something that you can look forward to. And besides that, if you are just a positive SP Heathcliff, 
losing only 10 SP and then 20 SP and being at 20 SP the next turn for clashing things is pretty good also because you will be able to clash and you most likely will get more SP than what you are going to lose at the end of that turn so it's still pretty damn solid in my opinion. Yep. After attack, besides that, you get another special line here. Next turn, gain 20 bind. Alright, so that is really bad. That makes you 1 speed, means you can only clash with things that are targeting you. You also get before the king in binds. When this unit's attack with 1 attack weight hit, inflict 100% of the damage dealt as affinity of the attack skill used to hit, damage against 2 enemies with the least HP that can be attacked. And that was a lot of words, so let me summarize this. You use this ego. You get this special before the king in binds. Now the next attack you do, that is a single target attack, only single target attacks are allowed. That attack will inflict 100% of its damage to two other enemies with the least HP. So let's say you're using Rabbit, you use his Ego, you now use Quick Suppression. Quick Suppression is a single attack, it only targets one target, but because of this passive, you will now inflict 100% of the damage you dealt with Quick Suppression to two enemies with the least HP. If that wasn't enough, that is like sick dude. I think Rabbit cannot use this by the way. I'm just giving you an example. Rabbit, because he needs the speed to get coin power, so this 20 bind is extremely detrimental. You will have to wait until a Heathcliff that doesn't mind the bind comes along. Will They will be able to use this Ego uh, special status pretty much. Yeah. So this essentially converts any of the Heathcliffs single target move, big nuke, into a AOE nuke. So this is very, very, very powerful for certain fights where you're able to target multiple enemies. The wording here is a bit sus and I have not tested this ego yet, so I will not comment yet. But it's possible that, that two enemies can mean enemy parts, but it doesn't specify. So it might not even mean enemy parts. It might be two other enemies. So in that case, it might only be good if there are like multiple bosses to fight, like maybe the Ahead fight where there's like three things to fight. Or maybe if you fight like enemies with a bunch of ads, right? Like a bunch of umbrellas from Sunshower Fox, maybe that could also mean that could also be useful for the two enemies. I need to really go and examine what the two enemies with this HP means. So for now, I will have to uh, go and research on that one first. Yep, but essentially, this makes your really strong single target into AoE, and that is already very, very powerful. Like, imagine having a regret false condition on all Heath Cliffs, like. It opens up so many options and Pimon will basically have to balance every Heathcliff around the fact that before the king in binds will make one of his moves into an AoE move. It's very very scary. Yep. Alright, besides that, of course, another 2 attack power up. So yeah, you're getting so much shit already, right? 10 SP and you do a bunch of damage to 7 AoE and then you get 30 bind and this special thing to make your next move into an AoE move and 2 attack power up. Besides that, on every target you hit, you also bind them. You inflict 4 sinking on them, you inflict 4 tremor on them, and you trigger tremor burst. Who knows what the future ID is going to be? It could be sinking, it could be tremor, it could be none, it could be just whatever, right? But I'm guessing it's going to be sinking, TBH. Or maybe bleed or something, I don't know, right? I don't know. Right? It could be many, many things. This thing could just be very misleading. It's just a bunch of extra stuff. You can just ignore this part. The main thing to look at is the before the king in binds. That shit is kind of crack. Because every Heathcliff can use this one here. Except for Rabbit, because 20 bind. Right. Corrosion. After attack, next turn gain 20 bind. Now you get before the king. This one is before the king in binds, which has a crown on it. This one does not. This one is the same effect, but only does 50% damage in uh, AoE of 3 essentially. You also have 3 attack power up and another special effect here is that you will give this stats to 2 other allies. 2 gloom damage up and 3 attack power and 20 bind in the order of the deployment and it affects additional allies by your gloom or pride resonance minus 2. So this is interesting to use if you are using a team that is going to do gloom damage for additional nuking but it is going to cost you a lot of resources in order to get that. Like, that's a lot of resources. And you do not want to corrode with this ego because 7 AoE indiscriminate is going to wipe out the entire party. So definitely not something to go and try to go for, in my opinion. If you want to corrode, it's most likely going to be for a for fun, huge gloom damage number nuke or something like that. Yeah and it can give it to a bunch of your allies and blah 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 blah. The only other stat you're getting here is like 3, three bind next turn compared to 1 bind next turn. That's pretty much it. 
So I don't think it's actually very worth it, but it is interesting that you have another option here for Gloom Damage Up. Passive wise, it's actually a very decent passive. Chains of Binding is going to be 4 plus highest resonance. That includes this unit's skills. Apply 3 offense level up and 3 defense level up to self and all allies who are a part of that resonance. 3 offense level up, right? It's pretty damn good because that is 1 additional clashing power. That's a plus 1 for your clashing. And 3 defense level up is pretty much um, just more less damage taken. So yeah, this is just free and this is just free also. Pretty much all you need to do is just keep getting resonance. And if the Sid resonance was also an absolute resonance, you apply an additional 2 offense level up and defense level up. Maybe you can go and squeeze defense level up from Zoe Gregor or offense level up from other characters. But essentially, you can get a lot of this offense level, defense level shenanigans going on with this passive here. No clue if that future Heath Cliff is going to be associated with this part here very firmly, but I think that this part here is the big selling point for this ego. And by the way, you're only paying like 11 for all of this. It's going to be a 4 plus 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 for all of this stuff here. It's just mm, pretty damn good. The only weakness I would say is probably this huge amount of bind, unless the Heathcliff loves bind somehow. If he loves to get bound, then that shit is going to go crazy with this combo. Yeah. So for now, we'll keep this Heathcliff in view. I suspect it's going to be very, very powerful with whatever ID they want to release with a huge Heathcliff single target nuke because you can get an AoE here and I need to go and test that but being an AoE, you can probably do a crazy amount of damage like maybe 300, 400 damage to like a, a 3 people essentially. Yeah, I think that could be a very possible damage number to get in the future. Okay, so that is going to be it for all of the Egos. For now, I will just have to go and grind and get all of them and do some testing. I am also asking some of the people who have it already to go and test for me. If you already have tested any of these conditions, feel free to let me know. I really need to know whether the two enemy targeting thing here for the Bind Ego is correct. As well as the... What was the other one? Uh, I think it was for Otis's Bind. Yeah, Otis's Bind. Let me go and find it. For Otis's Bind, the thing I needed to know was... Ah, was whether this damage number is better compared to using the other Ufi Tremor Decay. Yeah, I need to check whether this one is better than the Decay one. Yep. I think those are the only two I need to double check, but overall I would say this battle pass is actually pretty damn solid overall. There's a lot of good stuff in this battle pass. Uh, the previous one was also pretty good, got effervescent corrosion stuff for like your burn and for your uh, tremor count stuff. And then this season we had a lot of stuff giving us uh, more tremor shenanigans with this Binds Ego here. More AoE shenanigans I would say with this Binds Ego here and then more charge count stuff, more uh, SP stuff, more sinking stuff like overall pretty pretty strong season I would say. Yeah, I can't wait for I can't wait to see the Heathcliff ID. I, I bet it will all make sense once I see the Heathcliff ID. Yep, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks guys for watching and remember to comment down any research that you've done, any findings that you found and anything that I've done wrong so that we can go and look at it together and then I'll make a future video to correct all of this stuff. Alright, so thanks guys for watching and I shall see you guys next time. Bye-bye.